Hello, I'm Diane Brimmel for Third Coast Books. I am here today with Dr. Hinya uh, Shannon Klein, and she has a magnificent book that is a wonderful story of the history in Europe between the wars during World War II, a wonderful romance, and an exciting adventure all in one book. And well, I want to welcome you, Doctor. Hi. Thank you so much. It is Thank a pleasure to have you here. And I, I'm fascinated. I loved reading your book because it spoke a lot about life between the wars. A lot of us know America's involvement mm -hmm. in the war, but we don't realize what was going on in Europe in the 1930s and mm -hmm. the, it, it, before our involvement in it. So can mm -hmm. you give me an idea of what life was like for a Jewish family in Europe in the late 1930s? A Jewish family in particular, a, a Polish Jewish family. Uh -huh. These are the families or family that I'm referring to in the book. Um, well, this particular family or couple uh, lived for generations. Their family, both families, lived for hundreds of years okay. in uh, Poland. Uh, although they uh, arrived at Poland uh, generations uh, earlier from different places, uh, like uh, Adels, here mm -hmm. I introduce her first yes. time by her name, the heroine of the story. Uh, her family probably came from Scandinavia somewhere, Sweden, probably Sweden, because Sweden at some point ruled Poland. And I want uh, to make the point right now, this is a fact-based story. It this is a fact-based story. Yes, right? you're retelling a story. Okay. Um, that, a historical Yes, story. that Based is historically on, uh, accurate, that is something right. that actually did well, happen. Well, more or yes. less accurate, I yes. cannot say, because otherwise, what's the meaning of a novel? It would have been a documentary, yes. which it's really not. Uh, the uh, uh, Ichel is the other yes. uh, figure in the story. Uh, his family uh, came from probably from Spain and Greece for okay. generations, but they lived uh, at least 400, 500 years um, in Poland. Now, they lived in uh, a little town, a typical little town that was typical at the time before World War II. Okay. Uh, that is called Shtetl. It's a Yiddish word. Mm -hmm. Shtetl means town, little town, small okay. town. That's it. That's all what it meant. They lived in, lived in a Shtetl. And uh, in their particular Shtetl, which is called Izbica, it still exists mm -hmm. to this day, it was known uh, generations ago, it was known as Jerusalem of Poland. Mm -hmm. uh, more or less, uh, which meant that they had a thriving Jewish life there. Okay. Not only a synagogue, but probably more than one synagogue and a Jewish cemetery. And the majority of the people in that little town mm -hmm. were Jews at some point until the uh, Nazi invasion in 1939, the Nazi invasion to Poland okay. in 1939. Uh, the majority of people there were Jews, and the minority were Christian. They all got along very well. It's, yes. like, it's like it happens in small towns. Um, they had the schools, the Jewish schools and everything. Uh, the Nazis invaded Poland uh, okay. in September, September 1st, actually, of 1939. Okay. And, uh, and that's it. World was, War II. Was this sudden? Or had the Jewish population had at least some kind of an echo where they felt like we need to be careful, we need, when did it, they start feeling the pressure? Was it very instantaneous? No, not okay. instantaneous because okay. it's like I write in the book, mm -hmm. uh, the, one of the figures in the book says, mm -hmm. like the, the parents of the, the heroes of the book, mm -hmm. um, when the youngsters in the family suggest to run away, mm -hmm. because here the, the Nazi army is already parked. I mean, they are waiting on the banks of uh, the river mm -hmm. that was adjacent to the uh, shtetl. Uh, they, they say, well, let's run from here because we, we don't know. I mean, an army here is not good. It yes. cannot be a good sign. Yes. And, um, and they said, and they still didn't hear rumors of what is going on because Nazis already started building concentration camps right. all over Europe, not only in There Poland. was already they extermination going on. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. But so rumors started flying, but they were not sure. It was okay. only rumors. But the youngsters, nevertheless, typical to young people, they mm -hmm. want action, they want to be active, they, they don't want to be reactive. Yes. Well, the older folks 
said no. I mean, we come from German families. We mm -hmm. know the German culture. Those won't do anything to us. I mean, right. what harm do we do? We are not armed or anything. I mean, we are civilians, simple civilians. We live our small life. Yes. Well, uh, so they said, we'll wait it out. You know, like Jews are used to pogroms. Mm -hmm. Pogroms were yes. um, uh, organized uh, extermination of yes. Jews all over Europe. Purging population. Yeah, just annihilate them. And that was organized, or, or organized by good uh, neighbors, not army. Uh, civil, uh, uh, civilians would do that. So Jews were used to that, and they said, well, maybe it's like another pogrom. It's bad, you know, some will be murdered, some will be killed, but we'll survive that too. Yes. We'll bend our head, we'll survive that too. Well, young people don't tend to do that. So um, some escaped. Where did they escape? To whatever border was the closest. In this case, Izbica is relatively close to the Russian border. Mm -hmm. So they escaped to Russia. Okay. And uh, when, But once you arrive in Russia or in another country, what happens? You're an illegal refugee. Correct. You have no documents. That means you are at risk. And there the were a lot of and illegal yeah. people in yeah. different countries in Europe during yeah. the war. There were hundreds of thousands. Yes. Six million Jews in overall. Okay, among them, three million in Poland alone. That, that was the majority of Jews were there. They were gone, all murdered. Uh, a few, one hundred thousands, were managed to escape and survive mm -hmm. prisons in Russia and in other places, mainly in Russia, labor camps and so forth. Right, and we'll go into survive. that it's during your book, which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. But that's sort of where the story really starts to get interesting. Your two main characters, they knew each other as children, they grew up together, that's and there was sort of a soulmate feeling between them. But once they are in Russia, it seems that it's hard to find food, it's hard to stay warm, it's hard to find... It was a world in war. Yes. Uh, the, the world was, was already in war. Yes. Uh, now, in huge countries like Russia, mm -hmm. it's hard also to move food around. Uh, mm -hmm. People were starving to begin with, even yes. in the Tsar's time, not to mention they went through a revolution mm -hmm. which left the, the, the country at large devastated. Mm -hmm. So here there are, you know, tens of thousands of refugees, newcomers that arrived there. Right. Uh, they have no documentation. That means, in other words, from their perspective, Russian perspective, they have no right to be here. Correct. Like it's a, what do we need to feed them to? That mirrors a lot of what goes mm -hmm. on in this country right now as well. That they are the world. There, it is. It really does. And what I found interesting is how all of this unfolds. Mm -hmm. It is their attempt to eat by selling pieces of their blanket. This is <laughs> the point where these two childhood sweethearts who fell in love and got married mm -hmm. and left for Russia, left their families behind, mm -hmm. and are suddenly separated. Well, they actually escaped to Russia yes. as a safe haven. They escaped from, from the Nazi invasion. Right. They don't know that when they left their families mm -hmm. behind, they will never see them again because right. they will be murdered by the Nazis in concentration camps or shot on the spot. So they escaped to a safe haven, supposedly. They arrived to the safe haven, and the mm -hmm. first thing they hear is the rumors that Jews are being abducted from the streets, kidnapped yes. from the streets, and being shipped away to God knows where, or mm -hmm. killed right there on the spot because they don't have any identification uh, documents, or how would they have? Um, so here's the safe haven. They run from one potential hell, which mm -hmm. they didn't know becomes a hell, to another safe haven, which turns out to be a real hell. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, these two uh, lovers that really loved each other from early childhood, they were the same age, um, their worst fear was to be separated. Yes. And how are they separated? They simply needed to survive. I mean, they couldn't find a job and work because they were illegal. Uh, they didn't know the language. Right. Polish Jews, you know, they come to a new country. Right. They didn't know the geography of the country. Where are they actually in the world? And um, and the husband, uh, which I call him Echele, um, actually goes out to the market, to the bazaar, to sell it uh, naively. They brought with them when they ran away. They're they blanket. brought a, a down blanket with them. 
And they cut it up into little pieces. Yeah, and because, to because they heard. This is the yes. naivete, the sweetness of it. They heard in Poland, the Russians pay well for down, for Polish down. Mm -hmm. So here these two naive children from the shtetl bring with them, I mean, on this trip for your life, I mean, the yes. journey to run for your life, bring with them. And they don't dare to cuddle in, the, in that down blanket because they keep it just in case yes. they need to sell it for food. Okay. And that's exactly what happened. They, they start. So they cut it into pieces to sell it in the market and buy food for that, to survive another day. Right. It's not to make a living or a business, just to survive another day. And, and when uh, the Italy goes out uh, to the market with the down blanket, he disappears. Yes. And this is where the story begins. And actually. it's a fascinating story because one of the things that I noticed uh, with your heroine Adele is the number of small miracles she encountered. Yes, but and she believed in miracles, yes. you know. It and takes one, it takes a believer to yes. recognize a miracle. Yes, yeah. and it is just when things seem that they can't get any worse, sometimes something <laughs> amazing and wonderful happens yes. because for two people, uh, she takes a great leap of faith yes. when she decides, when she hears that her husband may be in a gulag or maybe uh, working for the railroad. Well, it took he, years until she yes. heard that. She, oh, yes. He left no traces. Right. She yeah. searched across. Without traces. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He has no traces. That's Trying to find the places yeah. that he might be. Yeah. And that to me, now she was uh, of a coloring that she might not have appeared Jewish to everyone yeah. who met her. No, she knew that this is how she grew up. Yes. Uh, in a shtetl where most people have this Semite, uh, what we consider is a Semite uh, mm -hmm. out, uh, let me darker skin or darker yes. hair or whatever, she was unusual. Her, uh, like her mother, um, this is her Swedish blood, you see yes. the Swedish genes here. Um, she had these high cheekbones, very blonde, light blonde hair, right. very blue eyes, blue greenish eyes. Uh, the straight uh, nose. It. <laughs> uh, so in she, a way, she, she looked yeah. like a gentile, like a Polish gentile. Right. And it worked for her and against her. It depends what. You know. Yes. Um, yeah. It did help, I think, in some ways, probably for her to make. She made thousands of miles that she traveled. 20, about 20,000 kilometers, which are what, over 20, uh, over 12,000 miles or something. If I'm and this mistaken. takes us through Siberia and different areas, Mongolia, just in Mongolia. Entire European Russia yes. and Asian Russia to the end of really of the continent. And not just and that, Mongolia. in the horrible Russian winters. Yeah. And, and summers, and horrible summers. Too. So to know if this person survived those terrible situations. Mm -hmm. I want us to take a quick break because when we come back we're going to talk about the heroine, the hero, and an amazing adventure. I'm Diane Grimmel and we'll be right back. Hello, this is Diane Grimmel with Third Coast Books. I'm back with Dr. Henya Shannon Klein and her wonderful, wonderful book that follows a journey that is an absolute odyssey through the years between the two wars and through the Holocaust in Europe. And it's, I, I, I'm speechless when I think about okay. the level of dedication that you took to tell this story. And also when I think about uh, the heroine, her name is Adele, Mm -hmm. And this is a true story, mm -hmm. that she traveled thousands of miles mm -hmm. across Siberia and across Mongolia and mm -hmm. all across Russia, knowing really not how to look, but simply that her husband was taken by the soldiers. She followed her heart. Yes. She used her heart as her compass. Yes. She followed her heart as a compass and as an intuition where to go. It's and like she, she felt the calling, the pulling. And this is mm. until the day she finds out 
what happened to her husband. This goes across years. Yeah. This goes across spending an entire winter with this family. Yeah, at least or five winter. years. Yes. At least five years. Because every time she would come to a place where she had no money and nowhere to go, she mm -hmm. would encounter someone who gave her work or mm -hmm. someone who gave her a place to stay. She asked for it. She and created yes. it. And that's mm -hmm. what I loved about the book is mm -hmm. every time she's at the end of her rope, she has what she considers mm -hmm. a miracle. Sleeping in the snow in a shed with a dog, she considered a miracle because it was or not outside, outside in the taiga. That's right. Outdoors. She was grateful mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. she had a place to be. Right. Receiving a crust of bread or a cup of hot water, mm -hmm. she was grateful for the hot water and the crust of bread. Person, yes. I want to correct you. Her, she was grateful yes. for the person, for the hand who handed the yes. water, not for the water. I for understand. The person. What you're her miracles, the miracle, the way she defined the miracles were yeah. people were the miracles. Yes. Not the act itself. The act was a byproduct of what a person does. Therefore, she calls it, she referred to it as Menschlichkeit, yes. which is a German word, a term, yes. which meant compassion. It means compassion, humanness. And she, she actually attributed these acts of kindness, the unexpected acts of kindness, as not just miracles like God made. That's not, that wasn't her language, mm -hmm. but person made. The person is a godly creature. Yeah, creature, sorry, mm -hmm. creation. But uh, the, the act uh, was due to a person, a kind person who mm -hmm. did that, regardless of their religion or beliefs or whatever. That wasn't important. Yes. It's a person. So mensch comes from the word mensch, which is person. And in the story, in a time where there was so much fear, and people were truly afraid of strangers. People were afraid that anyone yes. they took in or helped right. might be a traitor, might be someone who was out right. to trap them. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that these people came forward and helped her yeah. at all is such a beautiful um, example of what we can be as human beings. Mensch how special right. we can right. be. Right. And so she right. never gives up faith during all these years, during mm -hmm. the war. She is traveling from town to town, traveling across snowy countryside, mm -hmm. freezing to death, right. begging. She gets ragged dresses from people and puts them on over her clothes to well, stay whatever warm. Whatever her clothes, she, she didn't write, start with ragged clothes. She, she started with good clothes. She, they wiped, her. she wrapped her feet in rags, though, to walk through the snow. Because the snow, the, yes. the boots were torn. Yes. And what choice did she have? And she, that's what I'm saying. She just kept going. Her feet are wrapped in rags. Mm -hmm. And as she and says, she, she looks like a babushka. Well, and she looked like a babushka. And she actually, when she was very, very hungry, this is... Um, starvation was, and hunger was her constant companion, yes. like fear, like anxiety. She uh, pushed uh, chunks, she would take chunks of snow and just put yes. into her mouth just to... Uh, to keep from feeling the yeah. hunger. Yeah, no, but she didn't give up hope, that's the thing, she didn't give up hope. She said, I will find him, dead yes. or alive, I'm hoping that I'm alive, but I'll find him. Yes. That was the, the, the drive. And the they were of her life. still yeah. basically newlyweds when all of this they occurred, were, when they were, were separated, yeah. when he was taken by soldiers and taken yeah. away. They got married in September of 1939, yes. probably. Uh, well, that, this is toward the end, uh, the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably ran away or started, they escaped from Izbica from Poland, mm -hmm. probably at the beginning of 1940 or the end of... Uh, 1939, it's mm -hmm. unclear. I mean, there are no documentation about that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from let's say from 1940, they are in Russia. Mm -hmm. 1940, she finds, well, okay, the trip takes about uh, five years. Yes. So, um, I don't think people today could even imagine walking through snow for five years, searching for the love of your life and praying that he is still living. People think in terms of uh, love of your life. That's Here love. Are. <laughs> yeah. That yes. is love. And I felt when I was reading it that it was such an epic love. I wanted them to make a movie of this because I thought what an extraordinary, uh, every bit of this story, down to her finally finding out what happened to her husband. 
is miraculous intercessions, it would seem, where we do wonder if there is a higher power helping us mm -hmm. through this difficult, difficult journey. It's up to the reader, you know. So that's belief. what I wanted to ask you. Um, doctor, you are a uh, doctor of psychology. Professor of psychology. Yes. And so when you think about uh, this story, what was more important to you, to tell the story from the point of view of having known, you knew some of the people who were connected to this story, or was it more important to look at this from an academic viewpoint? What did Not you? an academic. Okay. Academic, I have enough publication, academic publication, books, okay. articles, so no. Okay. It was really important to me to write it as a novel. It's okay. a love story, first and foremost. It's a love, it's an inspirational story right. of the power of love, love, a universal story yes. that happens to happen, you know, in a culture, Jewish culture, pre-World War II, uh, to two people that, you know, happen to live where they live. But the truth is, love is universal. So it's a universal story uh, of love. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an, a story of inspiration, the strength of, of determination, yes. of belief. Yes. Uh, what you call that belief, it's up to you to what your belief in your, you know, yeah. framework is. But um, it's a story of devotion and sacrifice, mm -hmm. of, of totality. You go into, at times during the book, the experiences of being inside of camps, being inside of prison work camps, yeah. and the fact that only so many grams of bread were given for certain jobs. Oh, so you... you you really do look at how difficult it was to survive, even for a few days or a few months, never mind surviving five years of walking through snow and... And, and more. I mean, the, the struggle doesn't end after yes. five years. Yes. It continues oh, yes. because oh, they, yes. their, their journey, her journey uh, yes. with her spouse's journey doesn't end when they find each other, right. but when she finds him, not right. find each other, she finds him. So that's also yes. um, and I like a miracle. That you follow her through. Yeah, but the rest then of they continue. Life. They yes. continue for the rest of their life. They have, they still have struggles, and another hell to yes. go through. And that's a different story. I mean, that's and the that's and yes, and that is true. That since you did mention that she does find him while he is still alive, there are many more travails that they go oh. through that are just as harrowing and as painful as anything that they have gone through during the war. Right. And Even in comparison. To say that this is an epic journey, as you said, an odyssey, is a really an understatement. There's so many layers and it is a sign of a kind of love we see very, very seldom in this world. And I think that people need to be reminded of. So is that one of the reasons you wrote the book, to remind people that that type of love is possible? Perhaps. My main drive was um, I, I felt that I fulfill an unspoken will uh, of a world that is gone. Mm -hmm. Part of it maybe is also beliefs in, in love, in uh, having a basher, mm -hmm. uh, having a soulmate or so forth. But the main drive was to tell the story of people that are gone from this world and their world that has gone, is not gone. So I feel like a voice to, to the dead, the departed, right. and the world that has departed. And Both, but it's important yeah. to me uh, to the reason why, uh, I mean, it is based on facts, most of it on facts, and research that I have done, very extensive research that I have done, including traveling in her footsteps, in Adele's footsteps, and find out that these places that I remember from stories really exist, and mm -hmm. being amazed that not only they exist, but her descriptions of 70 years earlier were so accurate. Wow. Which means nothing. Not much has changed in many places of the world, or of that mm -hmm. world, which was uh, quite uh, surprising, to say the least. So it was important to me to uh, express the, the power of the soul, of the spirit, of human spirit. When we are focused, we are determined, we believe deeply in something, yes. we can achieve 
We usually don't believe so much in ourselves that we have that strength until we are tested. But you, you can be tested over and over again and yes. not lose faith in yourself and then in your fellow and your man. And your heroine is and your fellow man. absolutely that person she that she is loving. tested and she could have, you know, tested. She could have become a very bitter woman. She is thrown out in the snow into the water so she decides to take a bath and get clean and yes. say this feels wonderful that I'm getting clean. That takes... The lice will die. Yes, the lice will die in the cold water now. So that's just yeah. an, ex an extraordinary attitude that she has. But continue believing in other people. Yes. Regardless of their faith. That's yes. the strength of human spirit. It's not just of Adele. Adele is an example and just for or a symbol of what we of are capable of. Most of us yes. are capable of. Yes. Don't lose faith in, in a fellow man, even if that fellow man has done something that you're wrong. Yes. To an extent, right? To an extent. I cannot be, you know, a saint. How has knowing uh, these people shaped the way you view the world now? <laughs> that's that's, a, that's, that's a, a very trap. long it's question. A, no, it's a trap question because I don't okay. want to tell the story. Okay, well, <laughs> this let, is how it's let, let me ask um, you this. Um, I, they, they, I share their beliefs. Do you see <laughs> that the type of difficulty that they went through in their world still exists in the world today? Is that something? To that, an extent, yes. Okay, and that, that type of horror is still existing absolutely. within our world today. Absolutely. So we need yeah. to be we need to bring an awareness to that. Yes. So yes. definitely I mm -hmm. think this book is a great tribute not only to the people in the European countries who lived a certain lifestyle prior to World War II, but those who perished there, those who were no yeah. longer with us. Because as long as there is still some of that treatment in the world we have a lot of work to look, do. Look at the rise of anti-Semitism yes. everywhere. Look at the rise of racism all Absolutely. over the world. Everywhere. I mean, look around you. I mean, we live in a certain neighborhood. We find that evidence in our neighborhoods as well. Yes. You know, history repeats itself, unfortunately. Yes. The So we, we see it all around us all the time. So there is... Uh, there's something special about a particular story that takes time between this and that year. Yes. But you look around and you say, really, what has changed so much? Yes. Is it different today? So we don't have the Nazis, the Nazi army. We have Nazis of a different sort. We, we have, have yes, other races absolutely. of a different sort. We have armies. We there's, a lot, there's still a lot of hate, but there's a lot of hope. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. And that's, that's the main focus. There is hope. In fellow men, and our ability, yes. in our ability to overcome, to overcome uh, strains, to overcome, it, to create challenges ourselves, and and fight them and come out okay. And that is such a beautiful message. And I'm glad that you've taken the time to write down this history and to record these events because these truly are a wonderful example to all of us of how we can live our life, how we can keep going, and how we can continue. So with that, uh, Doctor, I would like to thank you so thank much you. for thank being you. here with us. Uh, Third Coast Books is lucky to have your story you. and to know the kind of people who populate your story is an honor. It was a wonderful book and I thank you immensely. Thank you very much. I hope that you will take it from there and um, other people and we'll you know work on that. That's the way it them. works. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Diane Brimmel with Earth Coast Books. I want to thank Dr. Henya Shannon Klein. Her book and I Doctor I want to make sure that I get this correct is called Have You Seen a dark-haired man with burning eyes. I wanted to make sure I got that correct. Thank you so much. This is Diane Grimmel, Third Coast Books. Have a great day. Thank you. And we're good. Yeah.